the second keynote um, uh, by uh, Maurice Benayon, uh, whom we uh, also invited uh, to the conference to uh, give us uh, probably very different perspective um, on uh, the question of transparency uh, and Web3. Uh, Morris uh, is a French pioneer of uh, new media art, uh, also a curator and theorist uh, based in Paris and Hong Kong. Uh, his work employs various media, including computer graphics, immersive virtual rea reality or uh, large scale urban media art installations. Uh, he's often conceptual um, and his work uh, constitutes a critical investigation uh, of the mutations uh, in, uh, uh, the, in contemporary society uh, induced by the emerging or uh, recently adopted technologies. So, uh, Moritz, Moritz uh, welcome and uh, thank you very much for accepting uh, our invitation. Okay, great. Uh, first, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me uh to this uh, uh discussion symposium uh i know the situation is a kind of a very sad one because of, of uh, uh because of peter weibel uh and uh, i know many friends will will be there unfortunately i cannot come uh, for the ceremony uh i would i would like also to congratulate uh, uh, uh bognar Cognor because i think her talk was great really really great talk and i'm really happy she did that um i i will have um uh so uh, a different approach of course because i'm um uh i position myself here in this talk as uh, from an uh, artist point of view uh so um i try to uh, figure out what what is the impact of uh, recent technologies on uh on the the mutation that artists uh are scared of or afraid of and uh what how they um they could um deal with that uh the fact that i based the talk on on uh, some uh, recent works is because it's all about entanglement it's about how these different factors uh, from the network to ai from the blockchain to uh, to our bodies and so on, have an impact on how we uh, we can position ourselves uh, as an artist. So um, this is uh, what I was just saying. Uh, of course, uh, we have to start with some basic. So everybody has in mind what has been attributed to uh, uh, to Leonardo and that uh, la pittura e cosa mentale. And uh, so this is something happening that I have to. I will precise later because most of the things I will mention are related to the idea that uh, now artists work uh, not only with their brain, not only for, from their brain, but they produce something directly uh, out of the brain. Uh, so, uh, so how do we deal with complexity? Uh, I will start with something I presented in, in, in the show in uh, Asia Society. Hong Kong, uh, where I presented a timeline of my work. Uh, and uh, this timeline presents different works I did during the last 40 years uh, and how they are articulated together. Of course, we would expect uh, this to be based on specific technologies and to say this is VR, this is uh, 3D computer graphics, this is uh, AR, this is uh, urban media, and so on. But actually, this is not what I did. I tried to explain that behind the work that I was trying to do were actually concepts. I started by uh, thinking about something that should be said about the evolution of technologies, but not from a technical point of view, but from uh, actually a conceptual point of view. So this is what we, you see or what you cannot read in gray. This is a different concept and their articulation to the different kind of work uh, I have done. So. Uh, as you cannot read, maybe I can zoom in. So you see the artwork as a society of agents, reactive architecture of communication, organic exhibition design, collective retinal memory, critical fusion, uh, and also extended relativity, open media, iterative curatorship, UGAN AI, 
uh, neurodesign, augmented serendipity, reification, artificial intentionality, sublimation, and so on, and behavioral design. So uh, that I, I thought we need to say that media artists are not necessarily making demos about technologies, uh, but they are strongly affected by the mutation of technologies. Uh, so, uh, of course, yeah, the, I, I will go through that uh, quite uh, quickly. But infrarealism is, for example, the fact that uh, that um, uh, you, the realism of uh, physical models may be used to produce image uh, without uh, uh, being capturing the light reflected reflected by the world. So that's a kind of post photography. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't want that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, a very important concept. Uh, let, let me skip the slides because um, anyway, I will talk about that them later, maybe this way. Uh, I will talk about the art object and the art subject, how we went from the object to the subject and what does it mean that the artwork is a subject uh, and what can be the impact and how AI, for example, may have an impact on that. How the artists come to uh, design the behavior of the artwork uh, and how the artwork and uh, does practice behavior analysis and how the artist is actually uh, do, uh, producing uh, uh, including in the artwork uh, what we could call artificial intentionality so and then i will talk about the artwork as a society of agents and so on so i try to because otherwise I have too many slides, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the semantic mechanics of the blockchain, so that's something important uh, that is in the smart contract. In a way, the smart contract is a regulation uh, tool that is uh, not so different from, uh, 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 let's say, a prompt for regulation for uh, a, a model of behavioral transaction. Uh, the meiotic engine, I will maybe say something on a, about that. I'm not sure. The inclination, which is also related to the recommendation engine. Um, and uh, the, uh, the brain ecosystem, so I will explain why, what I call neo design, uh, why we say that uh, we are doing iterative curatorship when you, we use AI. And um, augmented serendipity is one of the, uh, of the potential what, what, what came out of that. And sublimation and um, sublimation and reification, the two concepts that I will uh, use uh, uh, conversely, and, and also I will confront uh, them. And critical fusion is what is uh, the position of the artist in society. So that's what I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not doing that, so we go, uh, I start with the concept of virtuality uh, because this is something that was not at all uh, planned. I'm not talking about virtual reality, I'm talking about virtuality as a component of reality. And so this, uh, this very basic thing from milligram, reality, virtuality, continuum is kind of simplistic and doesn't explain at all what is at stake for the artist. So we could say that in a way the artist uh, may be confronted. And when I say the artist, I may say also everybody producing something which is a, a kind of a autonomous object or function that have an impact on society. And so uh, virtuality is of course, the, uh, uh, the virtual is the opposite of the actual. So that means once they happen, we talk about the future uh, temporality is about is about uh, is about the future. So how to make a work that is not based on what has been done by the artist, but on what will happen thanks to the artist. Complexity, different levels. Some people just uh, use uh, randomization, uh, but of course the, it can be experiential and relational complexity. Interactivity, uh, uh, the work ignores uh, the public, recognize the public. Uh, acknowledge the presence or dialogue with the public. And so you have different functions you can guess. And I, I, I'm go, I go straight, <laughs> sorry. No, because I discovered I, I have too many slides. So definitely I have to do that. 
So the concept of art subject is a very important one uh, because it's one of the fantasies of the humankind, uh, creating uh, the living in a way, uh, in a demiurgic uh, a fantasy. And this means, for example, in the situation of interaction uh, with the world, uh, we have goals and we interact at that, that's uh, inspired by the Norman uh, uh, graph, uh, how we interact with the world, how we interact with the machine. But now the machine is creating, a, is mirroring the form of interaction. And so the complexity of behavior of the machine that is related to the evolution we have been mentioning is uh, uh, actually something uh, that uh, creates this weird thing that suddenly we are confronted to the artwork as if we were confronted to somebody. And so some of the function uh, that, uh, of course, in terms of ethology of the so-called uh, art subject considered as a living being, and this is something uh, that uh, you may see if I send you the slides. So the, the starting point of uh, the, the Brain Factory project that I started in, uh, in uh, uh, 95, 96, and I see that in the public there are some people like Dun Choi that has been involved in presenting this uh, many times. So the, the Brain Factory is based on a very simple concept that one of the two fantasies of the humankind is sublimation and reification. So sublimation, that the conversion of the world into data, uh, so that means into uh, critic, uh, into um, uh, little elements that could be computed or treated by human brain. And so uh, the materiality of the thing is not as important. What is important is how we understand and we can interact with the world. And reification is a Marx concept uh, that uh, uh, all our uh, values, uh, attractions, and so on could become objects because then they would be marketable. So the 3D printing, for example, is converting a 3D model that has been generated as a sublimated model, and it, it becomes, it becomes uh, an object that can be uh, sold. So the, this project uh, was based on the idea that I create a situation where we go from the brain to the object. And um, this is, of course, a kind of parodic interpretation of this process that we want to do. And uh, that means to control the world. So um, this, is, uh, uh, this evolved more recently in 2019 uh, with the Value of Values project where I dealt with finance versus uh, ethics, versus ethics, and uh, where uh, it became uh, interesting to compare value uh, in financial terms with values as uh, human, uh, human values and ethical terms. So there, I have two collaborator, uh, collaborators on this project, Tobias Klein and Nicola Mendoza. Uh, to artists that have been working on that. I show you a bit of video, if I can play. Yes, I can. Ah, okay. So that uh, we use EEG to take from the brain a very simple information and uh, the user is facing uh, a shape generator and the shape generator is, uh, is uh, representing, is trying to uh, give a shape to human values. And so as human values exist in the human brain, uh, what happens, the human brain is the ecosystem. And the human values are living beings that evolve thanks to a feedback loop uh, according to how the brain workers, so the public, uh, interact with it, react. So it's like nature assessing the living beings and uh, so uh, when nature thinks this being cannot survive, dies. So we, what we take from the brain is on only yes and no. So this was in Guangzhou, uh, and, and then uh, the, the 3D model that are created that way uh, from a chain of DNA, uh, conceptual DNA, uh, are uh, sent to the blockchain and people can start making transactions with them. So they can, they can transfer and they can barter 
so I say, I don't want happiness, I want sex, for example, or I don't want money, I want democracy, or I don't want art, and so on. And so this uh, uh, generates, and uh, this uh, uh, generates, uh, let me skip uh, this because I will show you other things, uh, transactional poetry. Transactional poetry is a literal interpretation of the transaction. There is a transaction, you give me money to have love, uh, that means uh, this will be a sentence saying that. And so this is factual, and this is what people really do. And there are NFTs, so, uh, so it was launched in June uh, 2019. Um, and uh, what is interesting is that we go back to this idea of uh, communicating, or let's say, transmitting messages through transactions. Uh, when we consider that writing, speaking, and so on, writing mostly uh, and calculating came from transactions in the history of the uh, of the humankind. And so we can say it's a global project with plenty of components, and uh, it's uh, actually a network of artworks. This is what I will present. This is the entanglement I was talking about because you will see that there are different actors that are agents, actually, and these agents have different, uh, different biases and different uh, uh, tools, and they play a role in creating a kind of micro-society uh, where uh, we go deeper uh, in this topic. So here the, the public become an artist, curator, collector, art dealer, and trader. And the artwork itself, uh, as a, a generator, a calligrapher, a printer, a reader, an interpreter, scientist, analyst, accountant, and so on. So the, 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 the artwork from one show to another, they evolve. And uh, so this was the launching at, uh, uh, at uh, Art Center Nabi. Uh, where uh, we had uh, the, the media coming, and this was the launching of the uh, VOV uh, uh, tokens. So in June 2019, that was uh, where the, uh, in Guangzhou, where we had the app that allows people to do transactions, but we are talking about actual transaction. And this is uh, um, this was in Italy, in Macerata, for the uh, um, uh, for sure, where uh, we had a very small space, but with mirrors around it. And this was in Mocha Taipei, that was a kind of big version. And this was a, this is the most recent one that will uh, be presented in a different way uh, next week. It starts in Hong Kong next week, but it was in October, November in Asia Society Hong Kong, uh, called Morphogenesis of Values, how you give shape to values, how you give shape to ideas, I hold how you give shape to thoughts. And um, <clears throat> so people are sitting in these kind of chairs and they interact with the thing. So that, uh, and uh, one important aspect that we may discuss is the idea of, uh, of biases and prompt. So uh, I, I would like to, um, to clarify some things about the idea that a prompt is not an order we give to uh, AI, uh, AI software. Uh, it's a question that we address uh, to the kind of large memory or global memory of the humankind. And this question, we get answers. These answers represent a kind of statistical um, perception of uh, what people would understand out of that. And so that's uh, the interesting thing. So the shape you get at the end of the process uh, with value of values, uh, you get a 3D model that you can do whatever you want with it, including create a new 3D calligraphy. So each values are represented. I decided to use these models to create a calligraphy. And then an AI on the left is actually reading this calligraphy, trying to con convert it into uh, Chinese uh, ideograms. And on the right, this is the visual part. So what where it becomes interesting is here. Uh, so on the left, we find keywords coming from uh, rotating the, the character. And this rotation generate or suggest 
words that are used then by two different interpreters. The interpreters are actually AIs. Uh, one is a visual AI, as you can see, this is purely mid journey, uh, with a specific bias that is supposed to be an artistic bias. So the prompt is designed to create an artistic bias. Uh, but there are subtitles, and the subtitles are, uh, have another kind of the interpreter, uh, the writer, is actually has actually another kind of bias, which is a marketing bias. So we have marketing discourse over aesthetic discourse. Uh, yeah, I could I could show you that, but I'm not sure. I, how how much time do I have left? Maybe nothing. Uh, yes, uh, please come to an end uh, in the next two minutes, if possible. Oh, okay. Thank okay. You. So uh, let's say that. Um, that that uh, what the important what is important here is as soon as you have tokens representing values human values and you can trade them exactly like a trading platform you actually uh, uh, reveal what uh, cultural groups or geographic uh, uh, geographic communities uh, rank the human values and the ranking of human values can be compared on the website so if you go to vov.art uh, you will see all the information about the evolution of the value and uh, the values and compare different uh, different places like that. So that's the that's new trading platform. You can also make a 3D, uh, 3D printed objects. So this is done by Tobias Klein. This is a footprint of freedom. Uh, like the dinosaurs, as soon as you are interested in the footprint, that means you don't have the dinosaurs anymore. So you may not have freedom anymore. And just to conclude, uh, some other um, example of uh, uh, this kind of reflection, combining different tools. Uh, this is uh, so. This is uh, uh, robots, uh, robotic arms, playing human conflicts. So they play according to different models of conflict, like gender equality and. Uh, and Black Lives Matter uh, and uh, class struggle. And so robots try to understand humans. So wonder, just wondering why they, uh, why they do that. And this is uh, to end with uh, the project I did uh, with Refik and Adol, uh, where we did, uh, we did um, uh, urban installation, where the interaction of the art subject is an interaction. So they are aliens, actually. They are immigrants. And they interact with the people they don't know, don't understand, don't speak the language, and they try to learn it. And so the forms of interaction first are visual impacts and things like that. And then more and more, the sound, the gesture, uh, the two entities, there are two entities, uh, try to figure out how either understand humans or understand each other. So it's two artworks that try to understand each other as well.